Hello, CBC family. Pastor Rob here. It's Friday, September 25th. I hope you're doing great today, and this week has been better for you than maybe the last few weeks with all the smoke and all the heat and everything else. Um, so we've been in a series this fall, and it's going to continue all the way up to Christmas, but it's about Jesus. And this is the final week of Jesus the King, and then next week we're going to shift gears to look at um, the cross and, and our Lord and the whole journey to the cross. Uh, this week in particular, we're talking about uh, how Jesus is king over all, over all people. And it's really important. Now, right now in our country, I want to just sort of start by thinking about our country. We are not doing very well in oneness, are we? Uh, normally, I mean, it's our country's roots to have difference of opinions, to actually uh, squabble and have debate. But sadly now, our polarization is so bad, and we've started to villainize the other side of whatever issue you're on. And... Um, and sadly, as I talked about even last Sunday, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So there's a lot of hate, <clears throat> a lot of very horrible things being said on all sides. So my point is our country is not doing very well at oneness, um, which is um, ironic because do um, you remember on the saying of every dollar bill and coin, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And for us to both acknowledge our diversity so that we can live in oneness. Now, why would we expect that a society would do much better than if there's not truly redeemed hearts, transformed people leading the way? So, so today's passage is Ephesians chapter 2, and it's actually a vision statement of how God's people can lead the way toward oneness. Uh, and this is really important. So listen to God's word as I read from Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 11 to 22. Here's God's word. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who, are, who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who, who once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens of God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with, the, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole body being joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God's spirit, which God lives by his spirit. Amen. I love this passage. I love this passage because it, it shows the, the gift of, of God calling us out of our differences into oneness. And we celebrate the unity we have in Christ. And look what it says uh, in verse 13. Uh, Jesus brought us together. Uh, we who are far away. And remember, the differences back then were even more extreme than they are now. Uh, we know something in our culture of living together with differences. We're, we're struggling at it, obviously, but we know that. But back then, it was not just Jew and Gentile, as, as he talks about here, and all the, the, the pieces of that, but all the different nationalities, all the different ethnicities, all the different languages. And there was such fear and hostility of each other. So Jesus has brought us near. Verse 14, he's given us peace. He is our peace, and he brought the two and destroyed the barrier that kept us apart. The barrier of hostility before God. He paid the, the penalty of our sin, and he allows us now to be united in him. He says he created a new person out of the two to reconcile both of us to God. Uh, and then also verse 16, he has reconciled us uh, to God through the cross, and that's what unites us. So why is it so important that we think about our unity we have? Well, it goes all the way back to Genesis. It goes back to Genesis chapter 12 when God called Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you so you'll be a blessing to all the peoples, all the earth. 
And going all the way back to the beginning of the Bible has this been this mission, this vision for all people groups, all ethnicities. This is the very heart of God. God was not meant to be exclusively for just a certain ethnicity. Now, he started with the Jews to be a vehicle to the nations. And then, of course, when Jesus comes, as we've been looking in the book of Mark, good news, the Savior has been born for all people, uh, is what Luke says. And the gospel, the good news of Jesus is for everyone, for Jews and Gentiles, for Romans, for Greeks. And we just apply that today. Of course, we, we, we know this is important because we're celebrating Jesus as Savior of all people. He's King of all people. So I'm curious, uh, as we think about just, even just this little reflection in Scripture today, how are you doing living into the oneness we have in Christ? How are you doing? Do you see all the peoples of the earth as God sees them? Are you trying to anyway? And asking God to bring unity? What are you doing to help create unity? And of course, sometimes uh, it helps me to even remember that Many times people I might disagree with, or many people, I, many times the people I don't even understand from another culture, another a nationality even, many of them claim to have Jesus as their savior. So they are brothers and sisters in Christ and we are united in faith. I think about this even when we think about how is our nation uh, uh, handling immigrants who are here in the country illegally, and yet many of them are dear brothers and sisters in Christ. How are we wrestling with that sense of unity even as we wrestle with as a country what we're gonna do? And then at the same point, not only how are we living into unity, but how are you celebrating diversity? So here's the thing, when, when Jesus talks about, the, the, or Paul talks about how Jesus brings us together, and in this case, both circumcised and uncircumcised men, uh, as representing of Gentiles and Jews coming together into oneness, um, he's not eliminating all of these differences. Because remember, Jesus, God says that through Abraham, we're gonna bless all the world through you. And then when we get to heaven and Revelation, the book of Revelation talks about this view of heaven, that the, there's gonna be people there from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. So so we live with this, this not either or, but this both and. The both and that there's, that there's unity in Christ because of the cross and what Jesus did. And there's diversity of language, sometimes, of culture, sometimes, of tradition, of skin color. And how are we celebrating, how are we living in uh, to that diversity, not ignoring it. I don't think that'd be the right biblical thing to do, but it, but as we come together in Christ, as we keep pointing people to Christ, we still live in to that diversity. So maybe there's some part of a friend you need to get to know, or some part of a culture you need to get to know, some part of, of, of just celebrating um, uh, all the peoples of the earth, all the peoples of this USA of A, as we now are obviously a country of many, as was our founding father's dream. Uh, how are we celebrating the diversity in Rancho Cucamonga, in Southern California, in Los Angeles? Not to turn our back on it, but to live into it and, 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 and um, uh, lean into that and to celebrate it. Because we are both one in Christ and we are uh, representing all this diversity in Christ. It's like when Paul talks about all the diversity in the, in, the, in the body. So that is the body of Christ. So may you this week, maybe even today, have just a greater awareness like, Lord, thank you that we can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and thank you that you're drawing people everywhere from every background and to live with that, that, that richness and that, that diversity that you've made. So uh, Lord be with you. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday online uh, and then also Sunday evening for our service on site on the North Lawn at six o'clock. So have a great day. God bless you. Miss you all. We'll see you.